Good morning. Now is the time in our service when we open up our Bibles and remember the Lord Jesus Christ through the Lord's table. If you don't have a Bible with you, please raise up your hand, and we have some men who will be coming up the aisles and would be glad to give one to you. If you don't own a Bible, feel free to keep this one as our gift to you. Once you have your Bibles out, please open them up to Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 3. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 3. If you have one of our guest Bibles, that's page 524, right toward the middle. Isaiah 53 is probably a familiar passage to you. We hear it often around the holiday season, including in our Christmas Eve service. This is a familiar prophecy that was written hundreds of years before Jesus came to the earth. Through these prophetic words, ancient Israel was given some incredible insight into the life and the death of their coming Messiah. And as I read these familiar words, I'd like you to consider the contrast between what is said about Jesus and what is said about those who believe. And as we see that, that contrast, let's rejoice together as we look back on the hope and salvation brought by Messiah. In Isaiah 53, chapter 53, verse 3, the prophet wrote this about Messiah. He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, but the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. Here, hundreds of years before the birth of Messiah, much could already be known about him. From these verses, we see that he would live a life filled with hardship and suffering. And that this hardship and suffering were not for his own benefit, but for the benefit of those who would believe. He would be pierced through for our transgressions. He would be crushed for the sake of our sins. This passage tells of Messiah's difficult life and his tragic death, all for the sake of believers. And while Israel looked forward to this coming hope, we can look back with certainty and with more understanding that these words were fulfilled in the life, death, and resurrection of the God-man, Jesus Christ. Jesus came to earth, he lived a sorrow-filled life, and although he did no wrong, he died an excruciating death on the cross. Normally when the innocent suffers and the guiltless are punished, we don't rejoice. We typically don't find joy in the thought of the crushing of the innocent, but this innocent suffering is different. This was intentional, this was humble, this was sacrificial, this was for our sakes. We celebrate the suffering for the innocent because it's our only reason for any true hope. Everyone here has lived a life of rebellion against God. We've all disobeyed his commands. We all deserve the wrath of a holy God. But Jesus took that wrath for believers through his undeserved, bloody death on the cross. And we know, of course, that death could not hold him, and he rose in victory over death three days later. One thing Isaiah's prophecy shows here is that believers are not responsible for their salvation in any way. We did nothing to deserve our salvation or to earn it. We have no part in accomplishing our salvation. But Jesus accomplished it by offering himself as a sacrificial lamb so that God would see us with his righteousness, with the righteousness of Christ. And in this time of communion, we soberly remember and celebrate this work of the Lord that we did not earn and that we could not accomplish. If you have not turned to Christ and believed in the substitutionary sacrifice for sin, then please take this time to consider where you are placing your eternal hope. Please know that scripture teaches that true hope is found only in Christ and you must submit yourself to him. 
And if this is you and you don't believe, please allow the bread and the juice to pass as they go by. This is a time of intimate fellowship intended for those who believe to remember Christ. Believers, before you consume the cracker and the juice, take some time to reflect on this undeserved gift from God. Consider what it cost Jesus and the wonder that he would humble himself for your sake. If you have unconfessed sin before God, confess it to him in in prayer and commit to forsaking it. And take the bread and the juice as your hearts are prepared. Men, please serve us.